Hi, welcome to my first video on using Photoshop to adjust landscape images. And what I'm going to do in this series is concentrate on making local adjustments where we can use Photoshop to set up specific masks so that we can apply the changes we want to make in areas that we select ourselves. What I've got here is a 16-bit TIFF image that I've loaded into Photoshop and I'm going to look to brighten up the shadows and darken down the highlights. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create two adjustment layers and I'm going to go to the adjustment layer icon which is this circle half black half white click on that and I get my list and I'm going to go to curves and the first one I'm going to call brighten And I'm going to go to make a second adjustment layer, again curves. And I'm going to call this one, double click in the name, darken. Now, at the moment, what we've got is two adjustment layers with a box determining the extent of the adjustment I'm making and the nature of the adjustment I'm making, and a mask, these boxes here, that determine where that change is made. So first of all, I'll just turn off the visibility of the darken layer and select the brighten layer and I'm going to push the curve up until I get to a point where I'm liking the look of the shadowy areas. And that's pushed all of this area to be vastly overexposed. That's a little bit extreme, so just pull this back down a bit. Okay. Now, that mask here is white, which means it's totally transparent. And what I want to do is to paint onto this a mask that allows me to separate the shadows from the highlights. So the first thing I'm going to do is invert this mask by hitting Control i and that makes it completely black. Now what I can do is I can actually paint on that uh, black mask layer with a white colored brush to actually reveal specifically the areas that I want to lighten. Now we can pick the color using the foreground or the background color and they should look like that. If they don't hit D for default which will take them back and then if you want to swatch between white and black just hit X and it will switch between the two. So I've got the color set at white, I've got my brush a tool selected on the toolbar here and I want to make that brush a bit bigger. I can make the brush bigger and smaller using the square brackets on the keyboard. Open square brackets makes it smaller, close square brackets makes it bigger. Yeah. Other adjustment I've got is I can change the opacity if you like the thickness of the ink and the flow, the, the flow at which the ink is coming out of the pen. So they're both set reasonably high. So as I now paint onto that mask, you can see I'm starting to reveal details in the area. Because those opacity and flow aren't set to 100%, I can build this up gradually by making multiple passes over the area where I want to make the changes. If I go a bit too far, say like I go out there and I've brightened an area I don't want to, all I've got to do is go back over here, change the color, either using the arrows or using the X key and now I've got it black and I can just paint that black out. Change it again back to white and then paint it in a bit more here. Okay, so that's pretty much what I want. So that's got my shadows lightened up and what I want to do now is to darken down some of the brighter areas in the sky here. So now I'll go to my darken layer, turn on the visibility, and I'm going to pull that down. Now again, what it's doing is it's pulling down the exposure in the whole of the area. So I'm going to again invert that mask, control I, and now I've got a black mask. I'm still set on white for my paintbrush, and so now all I need to do is to paint that in. And what you'll see here is that in areas like this where the branches are crossing the sky, 
I'm starting to darken the branches in a way that I don't want. And that is highlighting the reason for some of the more advanced ways of creating masks that I'm going to come on into the later, later videos. But basically, that's pretty much as far as I want to go at the moment. Just one more thing to say. If I use the backspace key, it will actually point, put an overlay on there, which in some cases just will help me to determine exactly where I want that mask to go. If I turn it back off by hitting the backslash key again. So I've essentially finished now. And all I'm going to do is to flatten that image back down, flatten all these layers so that I can resave that file in its original format with its original file name. So if we go to the layer menu here, flatten image, it's flattened it down, file, save, and it has saved the image in its original format. So I hope you found that helpful. I hope it encourages you to at least have a try at using uh, uh, Photoshop for your landscape images. This video shouldn't take much more than about five minutes and so you should be able to do that pretty much in real time as well. And in the next video I'll go on to other ways in which you can make masks. So thanks for watching and goodbye.